And this episode of Pen Point starts right now. This episode of Pen Point is brought to you by Squarespace. Let them do your website. So, um, I want to talk about, uh, I got to tell you, I got some really, really smart friends. I mean, I once said to uh, Lawrence O'Donnell Jr., who is a very good friend of mine, and who has a, uh, uh, has a, uh, uh, he's got a show starting up on MSNBC at um, 10 p.m., uh, some sort of, you know, kind of end of the show, uh, end of the day show, wrapping up on the news. And uh, Lawrence O'Donnell Jr. is one of my closest friends, and he'll be great in the show. Um, so, uh, uh, LOD, so that's what I call Lawrence O'Donnell Jr. I, I once said to LOD that ever since I was a child, I always wanted to be surrounded by people who were smarter than me. And LOD said, fortunately for you, that's really simple. <laughs> well, true. Um, so I had this other friend, uh, Bob Corn Revere, uh, who is a First Amendment attorney and uh, also a very, very close friend and one of the smartest, coolest cats who ever lived. So uh, he did a quote about the, um, the, the burning of the Koran on 9-11, uh, which, you know, never came to anything. But uh, there was a lot of discussion about book burning and so on. And his <clears throat> point of view, and also, I got to tell you, uh, even stronger point of view uh, was the amazing Randy, who was one of my biggest heroes and very, very smart, who wrote this email about, you know, this dipshit, asshole, hateful loser is burning books. And Bob Corn Revere's point of view was, it of course should be legal, but we should hate it. And Randy's point of view was, of course it should be legal, um, but, um, but if, if he does this and uh, uh, Muslims cause damage, then it's partially the guy's fault who burned the books, because when you're doing that, you know you're being insightful. And I argued with Randy, which I hardly ever do, because he's my hero, and if we argue, he's right and I'm wrong, right? You know, that's why that's why we're arguing. And uh, But I did argue with him on this and said that I didn't think it was the guy who burned the book's um, fault. You know, I thought he should be able to do that. And I really didn't think that the president and the general should say that someone um, uh, expressing a strong opinion in the United States of America uh, was wrong because overseas would be doing that. And uh, Bob Corn Revere came in in another place. And this was brought to you by Squarespace. And I want to um, I want to tell you about this. Uh, a Squarespace, you know, we have Penn and Teller website, and the Penn and Teller website costs like a zillion fucking dollars a month to have uh, to have maintained because we started it forever ago and we still have the same people and all of us are too embarrassed to tell them that they charge too much and that we could do it ourselves easily. We could do it ourselves with Squarespace. It, it's a publishing system for anyone looking to build a blog, portfolio, or any kind of website. You could do pinpoint with uh, Squarespace. To put it in layman's terms, Squarespace is a tool that would allow you, your mom, I mean anyone really, your grandmother, to build a website that is the same functions found as some of the coolest whiz-bang pages on the web. If you already have a site and want to make it easier to use, no problem. Their newly launched Site Importer tool makes it extremely easy to move sites from other environments into Squarespace. They even have a ton of new social widgets so no one will forget about your Twitter, okay? So this Squarespace thing is cool. As a PenPoint viewer, you can use the code PEN to get 10% off the life of your order. Go to squarespace.com to get started and tell them PEN sent you. So I don't want to, it's very wrong to, uh, to misstate my smarter friends' positions here because I haven't got word for word what they wrote. Um, but uh, Bob Corn Revere's position was that uh, he was always against book burning. He always, al always hated book burning, but it should always be legal. But, 
book burning is a bad thing to do no matter what. And I went on the point of view, because this is the kind of guy I am, uh, that I wanted to talk about. I was on the pro book burning side. I read all my books electronically. Books are just paper. They don't mean shit to me. Uh, I love Moby Dick more than anything, and yeah, I throw it away. All that stuff. Books are not magic, is what I kept saying. When you write something down, it's not automatically magic. If someone writes something uh, on my Twitter account that is hateful and awful and I don't want my name associated with it and I delete that, I haven't done something horrible because that information is lost for all eternity. I've just deleted a thing. And why is book burning different? And Bob and I went back and forth for a long while with a smarter guy, you know, the First Amendment attorney who's argued for the Supreme Court saying that uh, book burning was a really bad idea and he hated it, but it should be legal. And, you know, uh, juggler, uh, magician, you know, uh, uh, you know, barely high school educated clown college graduate was saying that it's just paper, it's just books, and they don't mean anything. It's just paper, it's just burning, uh, you know, products, pulp. It's just burning pulp. It means nothing. There's nothing magic when you put something in a book automatically. And then Bob explained to me exactly what he meant was simply that there is a symbolic tradition of burning books. And when you burn books, you are tying yourself into the tradition of the Nazis, the tradition of all, all, all um, the tradition of fascism, and the tradition of bad things. Bad people in the back in the past have burned books. And so Bob's point of view was, well, you know, if good people had burned books, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that it would mean something different. And he used the example of a burning cross. Now an atheist could in principle burn a cross to show disrespect for religion and show an atheist point of view. But it's not that. What burning a cross means is it's tied in with horrible, disgusting racism. So even though if I were to burn a cross, the, uh, the meaning uh, would be uh, anti-Christian, I couldn't actually express that meaning by burning a cross because what it means is something racist. And even if your position on burning books was that the content of these books is awful and they oppress women, they oppress gays, whatever you want to say, there is no God, um, the message gets garbled because burning books means something else. And the same argument can be made for certain words that you may have a clean, uh, clear meaning about. I mean, you may not in any way <clears throat> be a racist, you may not in any way be a homophobic, you may not in any way uh, be uh, insensitive to people who are uh, ha have, uh, have, have, have mental, uh, mental development problems, and yet there are words that have carried with them so much hate and so much unpleasantness that even if you have none of that in your heart, and you know, who can, who can say they're sure they have none of that in their heart, but even if you believe there's none of that in your heart, you're probably best to stay away from those words in any context because, not because you want to bridge your freedom of speech, because you're not, the government should make them illegal, but you should probably avoid them because they carry with them a, uh, a packet uh, of hate and a packet of um, historic uh, unpleasantness that may not be what you want to say. So Bob's point of view, as I finally understood it, and I'm not speaking for Bob Corn Revere, because Bob Corn Revere speaking for himself is always going to be better than me speaking for anybody, uh, uh, is that there is something historic in burning a book that comes along with that. So even if you burn Mein Kampf, even if you burn uh, a fascist literature, um, you still come out with some sort of pro-fascist statement from the very fact that you're burning books. So that's his point. And my point was simply, books aren't magic! Because there's no such thing as magic, and there is such a thing as books. That's all. And like one person, you know, said, imagine uh, a shitty magician, like me, Penn Jillette fucked up, imagine Penn Jillette dying. And I would write back to them and say, you know, that scares me. <laughs> you know, but instead of imagine you dying,